Hey, what's going on guys? Dope Spawner here, and I have done a crazy amount of upgrades to my uh, Prusa i3 from Fulgertech, and I decided I would take this video to show you guys some of the new upgrades that I haven't showed on video, um, some of the other upgrades that I've kind of done in individual episodes, and just show you guys everything that I have done to um, basically take this to where it's at right now. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I guess the best way we should probably do this is just kind of start from the top and work our way down. Um, if I show the whole printer, then it's zoomed out. I'd rather show you guys kind of a little more detail. So um, for starters, let's start with the top again. And this right here is basically a Z-axis uh, extender extension, which um, normally the motors are going to be sitting right here when you build the 3D printer. And uh, this would be right down here. And so with this little blue extension, it takes it from down here and raises it up here, giving you about, I don't know, that much more. Uh, I believe that this printer is rated at 175 or 180 millimeter um, build area. And so by removing that, just you know quickly, easily placing this up top right here, you're basically getting your 200 to maybe 215 um, build height so that's nice it gives you a little extra room to build um, your build area if you want to build something that's tall um, for a very simple you know simple upgrade literally um, you need a bearing um, I want to say they're called 509 bearings don't quote me on that but basically the st standard bearings that you use for all sorts of things they're literally the same bearings that are in skateboard wheels um, so I had a ton of those left over from when I basically destroyed or took apart my CNC machine so um, that was that that was a great mod which I think that everyone that has this printer should do next I printed out this uh, filament holder um, I printed it out once and it came out really terribly because the prints did not adhere to the bed properly I was right when I got the printer so obviously now I've got it a lot more dialed in um, so I reprinted those out and um, this is just a little extrusion that uh, of 2020 aluminum that they give you when you buy the 3D printer um, from Fulgertech. Uh, Normally the arm is off the side, but because my desk area in my room in general is just really small, I like to work with height over um, width. So that worked out beautifully. Um, really simple to print out. Basically just um, use some of the extra T-slots to um, secure it to the base. I just have one right here, one right here. I don't have anything on the back and then on top I don't have anything either. I use these extra like um, little L brackets because I didn't want to lock this in here just in case um, if you want to switch out filament quickly you'd have to unscrew it. Well because it's just kind of sitting there with these holding it in place you literally just it lifts right out so I, I like that. I, I like that a lot better although it would look a little cleaner having little um, T-slot nuts in here to hold it in place. I don't care. If for for um, overall usefulness um, and simplicity, that's just it's the way to go. Um, next, I made a video on this, um, but I added this LCD screen right here, which I did that because um, originally I wasn't going to do this. I said, but my printer had been having all sorts of issues with the USB disconnecting, which basically was screwing up my prints because I have a print going for like an hour and a half or two, and then all of a sudden it's frozen and. Uh, you know, wasting plastic and things like that. So I installed that. Um, I am no longer using my computer at all. I'm using OctoPrint to print things, but it's still nice having the little LCD screen in case you do ever just want to print from an SD card. And I can monitor the temperatures and things like that and see it while it's heating up. So it's it's still useful. I, I like it. I definitely think that regardless of whether you're, um, you know, going to use OctoPrint or not, it's still nice having an LCD screen, and uh, I, again, I picked it up for like $18, so it's not like they're really expensive by any means. So on the side of the 3D printer, um, I printed this out, um, the screen bracket, which basically houses, uh, I want to say it's an 80 millimeter fan. Um, I have had plenty of issues with ramps boards. Um, I had a little issue with this one too, um, the one that originally came with this printer um, I swapped it out for a different one but I found it afterwards that the one I took out was totally fine but the um, the fuses and components on the ramps board get extremely hot and so um, I figured it wouldn't hurt anything to have a dedicated fan that when the printer's on is constantly blowing cold air on all the circuit boards or all, all the uh, all the boards that control the printer so yeah I did install that and that was extremely um, <laughs> extremely useful I'm glad that I did that um, I also have the Raspberry Pi mounted on the back side of this. There you go. So there is the 
<sighs> Raspberry Pi, which is running Octoprint. Um, originally, I was going to actually like drill it into the acrylic piece or figure out another way to mount it. I started printing a case out for it, but I honestly, after a while, decided, heck, the other two boards aren't in a case. Why am I going to give the Octopi a case and not the other ones? So then it was either my option was either give them all a case or just let them all be out in the open. And I decided, heck, let them all be out in the open um, for this build, at least. And um, I literally this is like the one thing where I kind of like ghetto rigged it. But I took one zip tie on the middle of the Octopi or the um, Raspberry Pi, excuse me, and wrapped it under or around the acrylic and locked it in place. Honestly, the board is so small and I've never had any issues with it getting even remotely warm. So. I don't see that being an issue at all. Um, ideally, I guess printing some kind of a mount out would have been a little better or drilling it through, but um, it works. So, and it's on the back side, you can't see it. So I, I don't know, it's it's fine in my opinion. And then I've just got a little USB cable that connects between the Arduino and the um, Raspberry Pi board. Also on the back side, I've got this little, uh, basically mounting brackets, which, um, basically hold the Xbox 360 PSU in place there you go you can see it a little better now but yeah so um, first is having the Xbox power supply just kind of hanging out behind the printer I figured I've got this space back there might as well just mount it there um, it's out of the way and I don't have to worry about it like falling off the side of the desk and like that and it's it's really secure um, I can unplug it if I need to and it slide you can slide it out if you need to but um, it's extremely secure I mean it's it's not going anywhere so I thought that was kind of cool, um, just to kind of make the Xbox power supply look um, more uniform with the rest of the machine. The, um, the next thing I did was print out these, hopefully you can kind of see it, but these blue guys right here that are on the spiral rods, uh, basically those are Z-axis uh, tensioners, and inside of there, normally you have one nut that holds this, um, I guess, X x-axis or z-axis but this this plastic part right here on both sides you've got one nut that kind of just sits there um, well inside of this blue piece there is um, you've basically got a nut then a spring and another nut and the springs are compressed which kind of locks <clears throat> locks everything in there and keeps it keeps it from popping off and just helps to actually secure um, the z-axis so um, that was just an easy little print. Um, my buddy of mine um, that also picked up one of these printers, um, Zach, he's the one that sent me the link to that saying that he was going to print them out. And so I saw it and was like, heck, that's a good idea. So I printed one out for myself. And this one's a little hard to see from this angle, um, or if at all, it's really small. <clears throat> but I was looking into, I was having issues originally with leveling the bed on this, and I was having issues with the Z end stop right here being pushed down um, a little bit every once in a while from this whole plastic piece basically coming down and hitting the switch and so I knew there had to be something better out there they couldn't be dealing with the problem and I found a um, file on basically a way to more precisely level or precisely use the Z end stop for a Prusa and I didn't end up printing out the whole file I just printed out one piece that basically hooked on to the plastic at the end right here and let me add a screw. So now instead of the whole plastic coming down and hitting the switch, which again was causing a little bit of movement every once in a while, this little screw just basically comes down and lined, it's lined up perfectly with it and taps it. So um, that, that is something really small, but it has been fantastic. So definitely highly recommend that if you're having issues with the uh, Z-axis end stop at all on a uh, Prusa style printer. Well, since I've got the printer turned on this side, um, I guess I'll show you this guy, which don't, you know, don't uh, be too harsh with me on this one, but um, I designed it myself. Um, I don't, I'm not very comfortable or familiar with CAD software, so this was, uh, this is one of the few things I have actually designed, but um, basically I wanted a way to turn the LEDs on and off on this 3D printer versus having them just on all the time when the printer's plugged in, and I also wanted a way to take the Xbox 360's power supply out of on mode. I wanted to be able to switch it back and forth between like sleep or standby and um, actually being on um, versus having to unplug it every single time as well. So I um, went through a couple little revisions and this was the end result. But um, yeah, it basically just locks on to the 2020 aluminum. I've got a little T-slot nut behind here um, and right here. 
And um, I've got two switches that I wired up to the LEDs as well as the power. And so now when I flip the switch on right here, fans all kick on. I don't know if you can hear them at all, but fans kick on and the Xbox power supply gets powered. And when I kick this on, LEDs turn on. So on, off LEDs, then power on and off. So I am very happy with the end result, regardless of whether, you know, someone else out there can have done a way better job. Um, this is something that, again, I just basically designed myself. So um, for me, there's a little bit of pride in doing something like that, especially when you haven't, um, you know, are, aren't very familiar with CAD software. So yeah, got that little, little guy right there, which has been pretty useful. So this isn't a print, but um, just there's a layer of cork basically in between my bed, um, in between the bed and the actual frame for the bed to help with heating. I had I had some foil tape on the outside, but I took it off because I was doing some testing and checking things out. I might put it back on, or I might not, or I might use uh, <coughs> some Kapton tape if I can order some thicker Kapton, which I think is probably better to use than foil tape. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's that. This guy right here, which is a replacement for the X end stop um, holder, the default bracket. Um, I just like this one a lot better. Um, it snaps onto both of the rails. You can slide it back and forth easily, but it stays in place. It won't move at all, really. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. So that's definitely something that I think is worth an upgrade um, versus having the one of the Titan. And if you need to move it, it's a pain in the butt. This one literally snaps on, snaps off, and you can slide it again. Um, it's, it's just fantastic. Yeah, it's great. Okay, so I have this setup right here. Um, this is basically a servo for auto leveling. Um, the only issue I'm having with auto leveling is the switch I'm trying to use is not really um, registering when it's hitting. Uh, it's like too small of a switch and the part holding it is getting in the way so I'm either going to have to just redesign the bracket or order a switch that's got a bigger um, trigger or button. Um, but yeah, so that's that, the servo right there. It's, the servo is all wired up. Um, all I really need to do is pop on the uh, arm with a, a switch at the end or an end stop on the end. Um, and then I just printed out this right here, which is a um, cooling layer fan. Um, so now I've got a fan right here, the stock one, and then another cooling layer fan because I literally 99% of the time print with um, PLA over ABS and having a cooler cooling layer fan is useful. So um, this one is basically just screwed into, there's like an aluminum block that has a couple of threaded holes and I, it just so happened that the M3 um, the M3 screws I had fit into this, those holes perfectly so um, I was looking around on Thingiverse for something I could use for this and there was nothing like specifically designed for this but um, I did find somebody that had created a um, fan mount for um, Greg's extruder setup and it just so happened that I was able to take a couple parts from that and use it for this and it worked out um, great. I wish that the end of the fan um, was a little bit closer to the tip of the extruder but overall uh, it's still pretty close and I'm extremely happy with the end result. So this is it guys. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is my heavily modified Fulgurtec 2020 Prusa i3 um, 3D printer and um, I am done with it. Um, I'm sure there'll be little tweaks here and there. Um, there's a couple of things I want to do more for fun that are just like um, cosmetic tweaks um, or add-ons, additional add-ons versus actual you know feature enriching. Uh, or you know tuning for the printer itself, but um, yeah other than those things uh, and adding that arm for the the auto level servo uh, I am I can officially say done time like tweaking on this printer. I've spent a ridiculous amount of time um, Not because it needed it just because I I wanted to do it I kept like doing something and I'm like, oh, I should do that and then add it to my list and then oh add it to you know this and this and this and then all of a sudden there's like ten different things I want to do and I was like, oh my god, but yeah, I am extremely, extremely happy with the end result. Um, so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And um, if you haven't already, please be sure to like the video. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe for new great videos. I'm pushing them out as quickly as I can possibly think and, and um, you know, create and make them so that they are watch-worthy and watch-ready for you guys. And uh, if, you get, if you are interested in supporting the channel at all and um, helping me have uh, more time to do things like this, there's a link in the description over to my Patreon page. And... Um, I think a dollar is the minimum monthly donation, so that really helps out too, but 
Anyways, if you have any questions for me, please let me know as well in the comments down below and I'll do my best to help you um, as much as I possibly can or possibly somebody else with uh, equal or greater knowledge can help you out as well. So uh, on that note, I will end the video. Dope's Warner and I am out. Peace, guys.